stand. Let's all stand. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing, children. receive him. Let's try that again. Let that soak. Let that soak again. Turn and tell someone in sincerity, Jesus would have died on the cross if I were the only one that would have received him. If he would have died on the cross, and he would have died on the cross just for me, then will he heal me? Will he make a way for me? Somebody said, how can God make a way? Well, he made the heavens. He made the earth. He made a way that's called holiness. 
said there'd be a way and then there'd be a highway of holiness and no unclean could walk therein. Say, folk, I don't think we really know. Somebody said after a while. See, we all liked that after a while. When I was a little boy, they'd sing, you know, after a while, after a while, there'll come a happy day, thank God. After a while, after a while, just a little while, there'll come a happy day, thank God. After a day, all war and strife will soon be yours. A happy day, my God. After a while, after a while, after a while, there'll come a happy day. Praise God. After a while, after a while, after a while, there'll come a happy day. Praise God. After a while, all war and strife will soon be over. Some glad day. After a while, we'll find sweet peace on heaven's shore. There'll come a happy day, praise God. After a while, after a while, sing children. After a while, there'll come a happy day, praise God. After a while, after a while, after a while, there'll come a happy day, praise God. After a while. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Before I die, I'll fly away. Say, I'll fly away, oh glory. I will fly away. I'm not gonna die. Praise God, I'm gonna fly. I'll fly away. He set me free. He set me free. through. The Bible said God dwells in the praises of his people. <laughs> Turn around and tell somebody if you're saying pretty, the Lord will come and dwell with you. <laughs> That's praising God. You know, we say, Let's get together and sing and worship God. No, that's praising God. That's praising God. There's, there's praises that's given to God, utterance of our voice. We worship him in the enunciation of our voice. But uh, we praise him with the enunciation of our voice, but we worship him when we fall down before him. Holy Holy, have you ever noticed? Try it. Hey, folk, it won't hurt you. Just try something. I mean, I found out if, if I want to find out something, try it. If somebody tells me it works, I'll try it. And it works. Hey, you just start bending your knees. Just, just kind of bend them a little bit. 
and, and just start going down, hollering holy, crying holy, 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 we approach thy throne in the name of Jesus. We're not as those that don't know you. And we know the gateway to heaven is through the door. And Jesus is the door of the sheepfold. We know that the goats can't go through the, the door of the sheepfold. And we thank you because we can bow before you. Lord, how we want to really humble ourselves. Why should we even have to humble ourselves? Most of us are nothing anyhow. Wouldn't be anywhere if it was not for you. My God, how many preachers have I seen that's heady and high-minded and haughty. After you lift them up, after they started the right way, they all started on their knees. They all started praising you and calling on your name in an altar prayer, in a wooded section out on the desert, in the mountains. That's the way they started. But Lord, after they get going, they get heady and they get high-minded and they get haughty. They, they forget from whence they came, but bring us back to our knees. Lord, I'm not t talking about you knocking us down. I'm not talking about us getting sick. I'm not talking about us getting oppressed. I'm talking about this, Lord, that you you remind us where we got it. Where did we get it? Lord, I know where I got it. Down on my knees. Praise God. I got close to you on my knees. And if I want to get close to you again, I'll go on my Sunday for you on my knees. You're my Lord and you're my God. Lord, I thank you that I have the same vision. The disciples didn't even know it. Only one disciple knew the fullness of it. They saw you coming across the water. All the disciples saw you. Peter, James, and John. They were on the boat. They saw you coming out across that water. They saw you walking on the water. And of all of the disciples there was one that knew who you was. All the others knew you as one that was amongst them. That healed the sick and cast out devils and raised the dead. They all knew that. But Peter knew you more than that. He told them who you was. He said it's my Lord. Lord. And then he said, it's my God. And we're, I'm coming to you. Lord, we lift our hands. We know, Jesus, who you are. We really know who you are. And we lift our hands to you and cry that he is my Lord. Raise your hands and say it, folk. He's my Lord. And now finish it. And he's my God. Peter was the only one that really confessed it. He was the first one that confessed it. No wonder he had miracles. He confessed who Jesus was. He confessed that he was more than a man. Stand on your feet and say, he's my Lord and he's my God. The other disciples had, had great uh, anointings, but Peter was the fellow that didn't have to wait because he knew who Jesus was. I dare you to turn around and ask somebody, do you really know who Jesus is? Do you really know who Jesus is? Then I dare you, I challenge you to cry to the top of your voice, He's my Lord and my God. I dare to say it again. He's my Lord. He's my God. He is my Lord. Keep on saying it. The devil don't want you to say it. He is my God. He is my Lord and He's my God. And I'm going to worship Him. Praises be unto God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Listen, folk. We can hear preachers preach. This may shake you. You may not like what I'm getting ready to say. You can hear preachers preach and never get much. You can get it through your head. You can hear what they've got to say and by reason you will accept it or by, or by your reason you will reject it. But when you pray to God, he don't talk, talk through your head. He talks through your heart. Not as, you, as a man hears or thinketh in his head, so is he. Man makes you think through your head. Man comes through your brains. 
Man comes right through here, but God comes through here. Yes. Praise God. And this, this, this is a seat, S-E-A-T, of the bloodstream. And, and Jesus, Jesus was the heart of God. He was the life of God. He was God. I mean, he was God, that spirit manifest in flesh. Listen, folk, don't let it bother you. If you can't comprehend it, I can't either. When you get to where you can really understand something, it's not, it's not too interesting to you. But when you're digging and you're trying to find out what's making this thing work, you'll keep on searching. You'll keep on. Listen, when you find that $100 bill or that $20 bill, you quit looking. Keep looking. You may find another one. Some of us came to Pentecost and we found being a born again. Some people did in Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal and stopped there. Others said there's got to be more than that. And they read somewhere that Jesus suffered without the gate that he might sanctify the people and cleanse them and wash them. Cleanse them. You can't cleanse something except you wash it. Turn around and tell somebody, I've been washed in the blood. I mean, washed in the blood. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Me, don't rush me. Mud spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Give me time to worship it. Don't rush me. Praise God. When I'm eating something good, I want to take my time. Make it last. Are you washed in the blood? And the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Let's sing that chorus about three or four times. I mean, let our flesh think and let our blood think and, and let every, all of the senses we have, all of it, Take it in, feeling, and sight, and hearing, and taste, and smell. Are you washed in the blood? Worship him with, them, with all of your being. And the blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Shake hands with four or five people and sing it this way. Oh, yes, I'm washed in the blood. And the soul is the blood of the Lamb. My garments are spotless. They are white as snow. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. If I didn't have this mic, I mean, I'd be skipping down through that, that aisle. I dare somebody to let the excitement, Margie spoke about it a while ago, get in your whole body and your feet, bless God, skip around here, run around here, go back to the back, shake some hands, come up here and shake some hands. My God, you're in a place of worship, divine worship. Bigger, the biggest 
meeting they had was at the day of Pentecost and folk thought they were drunk. You get around holiness church in there, whoopee. You say, well, they sound like drunk folk. Listen, the drunks got it from us. They wouldn't even know how to dance if they hadn't watched David. David danced when he saw the Ark of the Covenant. When he just found the Ark, he didn't find the covenant, he just found something that held the covenant. See, he, he didn't get the covenant, he just sat, he found something that the covenant is in. The high priest had was the one that, that could reveal the covenant, and David was not the high priest. But he was a defender of the ark. God will take care of the covenant, don't worry about that. <laughs> Turn around and tell somebody, i got to take care of the ark. I don't have to worry about God taking care of the covenant. I mean, he's got the Holy Spirit. That's a covenant. He'll take care of that. But I've got to take care of this that it's in. If you love him, raise your hands and praise God. You're the temple of God. You, you are the ark of the covenant. In those days, they had little uh, furniture boxes. Put it that way so he can understand it. And I mean, they, they carried it. They were careful. And if anyone even stumbled, he died. It was over. You folks got the Holy Ghost, better walk carefully. You're not in too much trouble if you haven't become an Ark of the Covenant. But if you've been trusted by the Lord God, to be his dwelling place. Turn around and tell somebody, God lives in me. I dare you, we're gonna sing that. Are you washed in the blood? And I dare some of you. Bless God, get excited. I'm excited. There ain't a way in the world. There's no way I'll ever get old. I see some of these people 25 or 30 years old, and I mean, they're older than I am. <laughs> they're not getting that stuff on me. I've got eternal life in me. <laughs> Praise God. Are you washed? Go down these aisles. I dare a dozen of you to. Shake hands, everybody. You can. Garment spotless are the white. Are you washed in the blue of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blue? Let them shout, praise God, glory be to God. Let them keep on shouting, you rest of you be seated. I hope you sit down on a happy button and jump up. If you love him, raise your hands and praise God. Sit on a pin or, or a button or something, praise God, and make you hop back up. How many has got victory? How many has got some extra victory? Turn around and tap somebody on the shoulder and say, come to me and take what I've got. If you're, if you're ashamed of what you got, don't tell them. <laughs> come and 
come and take this thing that I preach about. Take this thing that I believe in. How many know you're right in God? And if nobody else in the world, if there, if there were not another person in the whole world that believed like you, turn and tell somebody it'd be terrible, but I'd be the only one right. <laughs> See that, Becky? How many people here, who amongst us, would withstand the whole world and say, I know that I'm right. Amen. And the whole world looked at you, said, you're not. And you say, God, have mercy on them. <laughs> Forgive them, for they know what they're saying. <laughs> when you get to the place you believe like that and nobody can shake you from your faith, then you can ask what you will. Oh, you see, that would be arrogant. That would not be arrogant. That would be steadfast, unmovable. If you can be moved from what you believe, you're not settled in it. And if you're not settled, then you don't have total faith. But if you're settled, you have total faith. See, there's, uh, Jesus spoke of a man that built his house upon the sand. Now watch it. He built his house upon the sand. I wonder how we're building. There's a lot more to this than we think. The man that built his house upon the sand worked as hard, sacrificed as much, took as long to build that house on the sand as it did the man that built his house upon the rock. Now you just think of that. And the winds came. The winds came and then the, the rain came and then the floods came and the house was not built upon the rock or a foundation. It was just built upon sand. And great was the fall of that house because it was not built upon the rock but he said there was another man that built his house upon the rock this poor man that built his house on the sand worked he labored he got the best material couldn't have built it any better, but it wasn't built upon the rock. I thank God that he's letting your minds think tonight. Another man kept looking and searching until he found a good foundation. He likewise spent the same amount of time but he built his house on